Hey guys, and welcome to the video. This one is just gonna be fairly quick, a public service announcement type deal, just some huge news that's gone down over on the Switch scene regarding mod chips. Before I continue, don't forget, hit that like button. You guys always do a fantastic job with that, and I can't appreciate you enough. Many sincere thank yous to everyone out there. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's cover this huge and important piece piece of news regarding what a developer was able to do with these Switch mod chips. Alrighty, so just a little bit ago, Logic Sunrise posted this where a developer had successfully dumped the SX Core firmware, more specifically SS Core, SX Lite firmware, and now they have everything that they need in order to take full control of the mod chips. Now, just let me clear up some information. First, there were two things that Team Executor put in place in order to keep you know, control of the mod chips, obviously for themselves. They put some type of DRM there, which was Insta defeated. I believe the developer of Atmosphere is the one who defeated that DRM. The problem is even though they had defeated the DRM, they could not successfully dump the firmware of the mod chips themselves without it glitching out. Now I wanna be clear here. The firmware that I'm talking about is not SXOS. That's the operating system that you know goes in your switch and takes control of the switch and whatnot. I'm talking about the firmware of the mod chips themselves. What controls the mod chip, what governs the mod chip, and you know makes it function. That firmware. That is what they couldn't dump until now. So they've successfully dumped it and they already had the DRM. So now they can take, again, full control of these mod chips. On top of that, because they've done this, now you can technically make open source mod chips. In other words, you can make cloner mod chips because you now have everything you need to make them fully functional. Now, the guy who actually did this is Mike Heskin, aka Hex Keys. This was the same developer who was responsible for finding the brick bomb that was hidden in SXOS when it first came out almost two and a half years ago. He was able to confirm it. I also believe he was one of the first ones, if not the first one, that was also able to confirm that SXOS was indeed Atmosphere. There was a lot of allegation that Team Executor had stolen Atmosphere and that SXOS was you know, just Atmosphere in a different wrapper and he was able to to confirm this as well. So he's the one who was able to successfully dump the firmware of these mod chips. So now let's go ahead and talk very quickly about what we know is going to happen and what is not going to happen. We know that now that this firmware has been dumped, it is going to get reverse engineered. It's going more than likely to get recoded. People who have these mod chips, even if Team Executor falls off the face of the earth, their mod chips will still more than likely be usable because once this dumped firmware gets reverse engineered, gets recoded or whatever, they can flash their mod chips and then they should be able to install anything they want, including Atmosphere, because they'll be using this modded firmware or this recoded firmware, reworked firmware, whatever you want to call it. So their mod chips won't be completely useless. We know that the developer of Atmosphere is working on getting Atmosphere to work with Marico switches because the Marico keys had leaked and he's actually getting fairly close to being done with that every now and then. He gives an update. It's something he's been working on the past two or three months. So that's getting there. It also means that, as I mentioned before, someone else can clone these chips. They can make these open source mod chips. Now, of course, you run the risk of having Nintendo breathing down your neck as they have in the past with not just the people who make these chips, but the ones who sell them. Last week, we also saw uberchips.com losing the lawsuit and having to pay now Nintendo 
two million dollars so of course people who sell them will run that risk as well but nonetheless it opens up that door there's a possibility there but it will not lead to a simple usb solution i've already seen that in some of the forums and in some comments people saying oh this is going to lead to something super simple or hopefully it's going to lead to you know a usb solution for all switches and switch lights no it's not you're still going to need a mod chip but at least this just opens up the possibility of other people making mod chips and for those who already have these it means that if team executor completely falls off the face of the earth that your mod chips won't be completely useless you'll still be able to flash them and then you'll be able to install atmosphere or whatever else you want so that's it guys, I just wanted to make you aware of what was going on and to give you a better understanding of what this is, what it isn't, what you can expect, what not to expect, again, just for you to get a better picture of what this means. Anyway, if anything else happens regarding this, which I'm sure we are going to see more come down the pipe, I will make you aware. Thanks as always for watching. You know, I appreciate you if you found anything here helpful, useful, informative, or if you just want to throw some love or appreciation towards the channel. As always, all you need to do is hit that like button. Maybe subscribe if you haven't already. Much love going out to everyone out there. Be careful, be safe, but have fun, and we will catch you on the next one.